Praise the Lord, everybody. It's your girl, Minister Michelle Woody, coming to you once again, Facebook Live with another testimony, your Tuesdays. I am so excited on today because this first giving honor to my Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Let me slow down. Y'all already know how I do. Let me slow down, though. First giving honor to my Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and begin to worship him. I will bless the Lord at all times. Ah, and surely his abundance show, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'm so excited. I'm going to slow down, though. I'm going I'm to I'm learn to slow down, y'all. I promise you. But first, giving honor to my Lord Jesus Christ and my Savior. And, of course, to my bishop in his absence, Bishop Glenn A. Staples. And, of course, our very own senior pastor. Pastor Walter Lamar Staples. And I can't, I cannot go without saying our very own First Lady. <laughs> first Lady in the persons of First Lady Aisha Staples. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so excited. This young lady that I'm going to be presenting to you. I mean, it's it's amazing how we met, but not only that, she's related to someone that I'm already familiar with in ministry. And I'm telling you, the mantle has just been passed down through the generations with this family. And I'm just so excited. But before I introduce her, y'all already know, I will be coming out of the book of Revelation 3 for our hearing. The scripture will be coming out of Revelation 3, and it begins by saying, my God, I know thy works. <laughs> Behold, I have set before thee an open door, <laughs> and no man can shut it, for thou has little strength, my God, and has kept my word. Listen now, thou has little strength, but you still kept my words and has not denied my name. God's word is already blessed. For your reading and for your hearing, the word of the Lord is already blessed. I came out of Revelation 3 and 8, but... <laughs> I, I can't, I'm just going to go in and introduce her and then we're going to pray. I present to some and introduce to others our very own evangelist, Renee Hub. Won't y'all give her some hearts and some stars as she come on in here to God be the glory. Yay. How <laughs> woman of God, how are you doing? Look oh. at you looking fabulous. Oh, thank you. I'm blessed to be here tonight. I'm so blessed to be here tonight. Well, that's I'm 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 honored you said yes. I'm honored you said yes, and I'm glad you. I mean, it's so amazing how you you reached out to me. You was already, I mean, you already doing the call that God has on your life, but you said you was watching um, by web one day and it just so happened you scrolled through and then come to find out, you know, somebody that I know somebody and we all related <laughs> some shape, form or fashion by the persons of Pastor Lawrence Hub. I'm telling you, I can't get rid of him. That's my little big brother, but I can't get rid of him. You hear me? <laughs> but woman of God, I'm not going to hold you long, but I'm just so amazed as when men you start dialoguing, you was telling me your testimony. Yes. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing. And I, I want you to put it up now while the people can see it. Um, For everyone who's up here, thank you for chiming on in, Tamiko. Thank you, love. Um, If you don't mind, click tagging and sharing. This woman of God that sits before us in the persons of evangelist Renee Hub has went through many trials and tribulations, people of God. And I just want you to open up your heart and listen to what God has done for her. My God. I mean, it's so amazing. It's so amazing how God would keep his hand on you, even in your lowest state. Yeah. Ah, but before I go any further, I want to introduce her book. Can you show the people your book? And this is also where you can uh, go and purchase it. It is called, her title is From Bound to Found. Ah, I'm going to repeat that. From Bound to Found. And it's also, it's located at Walmart. And she has 
coffee mugs there. She has uh, sweet, uh, sweatshirts there and t-shirts there that you can please uh, purchase and be, uh, be supportive to her. And her website, of course, is called Inspiring to Live. Please go and purchase her book. Go purchase these items because this woman of God is already blossomed. She's taking, she's, she's going forward. She's, she's on a different flight. And I'm telling you, you want to be part of her ministry. She is very awesome, but I'm not going to hold this any longer. <clears throat> Evangelist Renee Hug. Yes. As you already know, woman of God, I ask pretty much everyone the same question, but in your own words, Enlighten the people or explain to us how did you come to know Jesus? Sure. Um, I, re I remember the day exactly. Uh, my mom was in the hospital. I was with her all night, 24 hours, basically. And this was the first time I heard God speak to me. Um, I'm walking to the elevator and I heard a voice say, go tell her you love her. My God. And I said, you know, I looked and I was like, who is this? I was like, I'll do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I went home and 5 a.m. the phone rung and my grandmother said, you all need to get up here to the hospital. By the time we got up there, my mom had cold blue. She just flatlined. And instantly my heart dropped. I woke up. I was in the emergency room. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And while I'm in the emergency room, um, my friends are talking to me. I get home and for a period of seven days, I could not talk. And the enemy was messing with my mind. He was telling me, you need to be with your mother. I kept seeing, I just kept hearing that. Mm -hmm. And my friend said, I don't know what's going on, but we're going to pray. And when I looked at her, she was, I, you know, I'm trying to relate to her. Like, I cannot talk. Mm -hmm. And during this seven day period of time, I honestly, I was thinking about suicide. The enemy was telling me, you need to be with your mother. My and I could not explain to anybody what was going on. It's, it was a, it's, as if my mouth was shut. And when she told me, she said, I need you to go to church with me. And I said, and she said, you need to go to church with me. Mm -hmm. And the pastor asked me, the pastor said, the enemy was trying to take you out. My God. She said, you need to accept Christ into your heart and into your life. And she said, God has a plan for you and a purpose for your life. And I had no idea what a purpose, a plan, none of that was until that day where she said, do, will you accept Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. And it was instantly that thing broke. And I, I said, yes. And this is your grandmother. This was, this was whom? This was my mother. Your mother. Yes. Mm. Yes. So it didn't happen. It did it happen in church or at the hospital. It happened at church. At church. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cause she compelled yes. you to come. She did. She finally convinced me to come after the funeral. You know, it was two days after and she finally convinced me to come. Yes. My God, to God be the glory. That's awesome. And I mean, as we was dialoguing and talking, you was telling me you lost your, you lost family members. Yes. Um, recently, July, actually June 6th, my grandfather passed away. Okay. Um, July 6th, my grandmother passed away. Um, June, July 20th, we were outside in the parking lot of the hospital with my nephew who was on life support. My niece called me and she said, auntie, I have to let you know that my niece in Georgia passed away from cancer. Oh my goodness. So this was July 20th. Two days later, my 28 year old nephew passed away from kidney failure. So all of this happened within a 40, I would say about a 40, 45 day period of this year. Of this year? Of this year. Yes. Yes. I mean, in spite of what we're going on already in the world, I mean, yes. that's, it just seems like it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. And on top of that, you had to endure what you're going through personal yes. and now to hear the death of so many loved ones. Yes. How did you, how did you get through that all? You know, we all talk about faith and we all talk about God, but it doesn't make us it, it doesn't matter if you have faith during the good times. Mm -hmm. I needed faith. I needed people around me that knew how to pray. Come on I, now. Then my relationship with God with God was being tested. Um, I didn't backslide. I didn't fall back. I didn't say I can't go to church. I went to church. 
um, I, I stayed on my post. I stayed going up for prayer. I stayed praying. I stayed teaching Sunday school because I know where my lifeline is. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's at, my, you know, with my relationship with God. And honestly, I was tested to the fact the day um, my cousin Lawrence was with me, we had to go to the funeral home and we had to basically identify my nephew and say, you know, his body, he was appropriate for the funeral. And I'm not talking about a nephew, you know, I'm talking about somebody that was like my son. Mm -hmm. And to have to bury him and to bury my grandmother, my grandfather, my niece, all of them within a 40 day period. I knew then and there that God had a purpose and God had a plan for my life. <laughs> And I knew then and there that if if it the, if it was ever time to say that I serve God and I trust God, it was mm -hmm. then during that moment in that it time. Was, baby, come on here. Because you know, when trouble comes, some people tend to fall by the wayside. You know, they're farewell Christians. I'm good when everything is good, but when when trouble comes, that's when you find out what's in you. That's when the rubber meets the road. So to baby, say. come on. That's when you you find out whether or not you rooted and grounded that's right. in Jesus that's Christ. Right. That's right. <laughs> And I'm not saying that I had good days. I had some days where I cried. Believe me, I still have my days. But mm -hmm. I know that God has a purpose and a plan. And out of all of that and losing them, I was able to start a new or a new thing called Inspiring to Live. Well, I actually inspire people every day with messages, letting them know you can make it, letting them know that better days are coming, letting coming. them know that no matter what comes against you, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And Come on now. With you, you don't need, you don't have to worry about anything else or anybody else. Yeah. So, yeah. Out of my pain, it birthed a greater purpose in me to see people live, to let people know. And you know, I, I don't just say that you can live and I'm inspiring people. I know what it's like to battle with suicide. I know My what it's God. like to be homeless. I know what it's like, you know, I'm walking down the street, it's 17 degrees outside and I'm walking to the bus stop, hands freezing and cold. So I can tell you, I know what it's like to be down. My you know, God. some okay. people, they give you somebody else's testimony. No, I'm telling you what God- You, tell, you telling us yours. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I mean, oh my God. Up close and personal. Yes. Now, wait a minute. I heard you say, <clears throat> you you know what it feel like to be homeless. Yes. Ex expound upon that, woman of God. I'm talking about, you know, I had to stay in a house with no water and no electric. And it was times I would have to get up and go to work early in the morning before anybody got there to take a shower. And I'm talking about it got to the point where I went to a family member and I, I said, can I come over and take a shower? And the family member said, no, you cannot. This is my yeah. house. No. But you know what? I was tested in that area with that family member because that family member in turn needed me. They didn't oh, have nothing. anywhere to stay. So it was at that moment where it was like I was being tested. What are you going to do when you're tested? Are you going to yeah. turn that person away and say, no, look what you did to me? No, right. I opened my door and right. I said, you're right. welcome to come in because it and, wasn't for me to pay that person back. It was for God. And you know what? That's Bible. He said, don't, <laughs> you just said something. Don't, don't do evil for evil. That's right. That's come right. on now. Don't do evil for evil. That's you right. had a chance and you took, you took the opportunity to minister to that person. Yes. My God, you said something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my God. And what you showed them was the characteristics and the attributes of who Jesus was. Yes. Even though they did you wrong for whatever reason, whatever that reason was to say no to you. Yeah. Guess what? It was all working for your good. That's right. It did. I'm, I'm going to let you keep talking. Okay. <laughs> keep, keep, just keep talking, baby girl. Keep talking. And you know, and my ministry is also for, you know, single mothers. Um, I, I tell my story often. I had both of my children by the time I was 18 and being a single teenage mom and then, you know, losing my mom in my early 20s. I raised my little sister. She was 12 at the time. So I'm in Wait my a minute. 20s. Wait, I'm sorry. You in your 20s. Yes. You have how many children by this I time? Had two children. And I had, and then I had to take my little sister who was 12 at the time. Okay, so her. you're in your 20s, yes. you had your two children, and then you had to take your little sister who was 12. Yes. 
Woo, okay, okay, keep talking. I'm just trying to paint the picture. I want the pe people of God to paint the picture so they can see the struggle, so yeah. they can see the load that was on your shoulder. But I'm saying all that to say this, you still sitting in front of us <laughs> and you got a smile on your face. I and, tell you. and, and, and in other words, it was all necessary. Uh, it was say, all necessary, but yes. go ahead. Fin okay, it where was, were you? Where were you when you, when I mean, where were you spiritually? What was going through your mind when at the age of 22 children, the loss of your family members, and now you got to take on your little, your sister? I was lost during that time, you know, because I'm like, I lost my mom. I have two children. I have my little sister. That's when I really battled with suicide. I tried to take my life because I felt that my children would have more with me not being here. Mm -hmm. And that's how I, that's what the enemy does. He will he will pick us at our lowest point and he will throw darts at you and throw stuff at you because he knows what's ahead of you. Mm -hmm. If I had taken my life then, I, I mean, I would who knows what my children would be. Right. And it was spoken over me that I would never be anything. I couldn't accomplish anything because I had children when I was young. And mm -hmm. I spoke over all three of them. I said, you, all three of you all will be somebody. You will break generational curses. I spoke Come on over there. Them every day. And I look now and people look at me and I'm not boasting. I'm not bragging, but I'm talking about how God made the devil a liar. Because yeah. of what he spoke over me, he said, your children are going to be the same way. My daughter is 25 now. She's married. She had a child after she got married. She uh -huh. broke generational curses that the enemy said and spoke over her. But I thank God that I was able to speak against that thing. Yeah. Even for yeah. my little sister, you know, people said she don't need to raise her. She's going to be just like her. I said, the devil is a lie. I said, no, she will not. That child was so smart. She said, I want to go to school. I said, you're going to go to school. She said, we don't have the money. I said, God is going to make a way. He's a Here provider. She now, she's 30 years old. Get ready to get her PhD. All right. And people, like I said, people spoke over her and spoke over me. You couldn't, you can't, you shouldn't. But guess what? God showed that they are a liar. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're going to die. Let's dive into your book called From Bound to Found. Yes. Give us, don't give us too much because I want the people to purchase the book. <laughs> but give us something in the book that you experienced that you know was nobody but God. Like you said, your fam one of your family members have already turned their back on you. Yes. I you know, I, I talk in the book about my relationship with my parents. Um, I have very loving parents. I was very, I didn't have to, fortunate when I grew up, I didn't have to want for anything. Okay. But as I became a teenager and when I became pregnant, that's when things changed for me. And it got to the point where my father actually forsook me. And I'm talking about being at a point where my father, everywhere you saw him, you saw me. And that to me, at being a teenager and a young lady, that's the worst and the hardest thing that you could ever experience and go through. Yeah. To have a parent forsake you. My and God. I understand, like I've never understood before the importance of having a father in the home. I understand Talk. the importance of having a father covering his daughter. Because through that period of him forsaking me, I went through so much. I battled with depression. Like I said, suicide. I battled with um, low self-esteem. All of that because of that one decision to that he decided to walk away from me. Come on now. So, and, and people, you know, like I said, people don't realize the importance of that. And I talk about that in the book about how being bound from my past, it took me so many years to realize that that's not who God created me to be. He created me with a purpose. I have no reason to have low self-esteem. I, you know, it took years to break that mold. And there's so many females out here that are battling with that. And they don't know that all you have to do is turn your life over to Christ and allow him to show you who you are in him and everything else. I'm, I'm serious is going to fall. Woman of God, you gave us so I don't even know where to because oh. <laughs> you I mean I'm just trying to 
take it all in. I'm trying to get my mind right. I'm trying. <clears throat> you 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 got me. You got me bobbling. <laughs> I'm serious right now because you was 20. Yes. So yeah. when God spoke to you about starting your own business, mm -hmm. you already heard what your sister said. Can, can I go to school? And you 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 already don't plead the blood over her life and your yeah. two children's life, and you already broke that generational curse. How was it for you at that moment mm -hmm. speaking life? Yeah, but now have yet to seen it manifest. What type of faith did you have to have? My God. When I say faith, I learned faith by, <laughs> you know, having to decide $20 for gas or $20 for food. I've learned faith when it's like you have rent, you don't have rent money, you have to buy food, you have to pay utilities. I've learned to trust God. I've learned to lean not on my own understanding. I've learned to trust God in all of my ways. Let me put when that I in. say my faith, you know, raising three children on income that, I mean, it was little to nothing, but God provided because of my faith, because, you know, I did not waver in that area. And yeah. that's why, and that's, you know, that's why he showed himself to be God, even during the bad times, you know, mm -hmm. he was still there with me. And that's what people have to realize. God is with you, rather you, if you're homeless, you have a home, you have a car, you don't have a car. God mm -hmm. is still there. He's faithful. He said, I would never leave you. And we well, forget for about that. We have to go through. How are you going to tell somebody they can make it through if we haven't been through anything? We Come haven't on, stood man. through any tests. We haven't stood through any trials. If every test that comes, we fall. How are we going to tell somebody they can make it through? This is, see, and this is what, as a Christian, as a body of Christ, yes. we see the glory. That's right of people That's but right. we don't know their story no. we don't know the nights they had to cry we I'm don't serious. know like you like you were saying how you was homeless yes the oil cost I the oil cost yes, and, 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 and the oil cost and beloved you said you lost so many family members grandmother nephew i mean and now you take i just I'm, i mean okay but be Whew, in the midst of all that, like you said, God still has his hand on you. Yes. <laughs> and what he allowed to do was let your faith be elevated. Yes. Ah, he already said he ain't gonna put no more on us than we can bear. But therefore, if 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 he put it on there, that means it was just a test of That's our right. faith. That's right. And like you said, in order for us to go from faith to faith to glory to glory, right. we got to be tested by the word that we know. Yeah. That's right. My God, thank you, kind spirit. See, now you're taking me there. We're gonna have to be tested That's on the right. words that we know. Cause he said it's better for you not to know. Cause if you know, I'm gonna have to charge you That's but right. we we when i say we the body of christ That's we right. tend just to look at someone else's story and be like oh my god to god be the glory to god be the glory yeah. but we know really what they had to oh my god what they had to endure i tell you i tell you, you. now you you done named several things and you've given us a plethora of testimonies in itself no food yeah. Lights off. Yeah. Had to decide whether or not to take this twenty dollars for food or for gas. That's right. And and honestly, most of us has been there and done that. Yeah, but people don't want to tell it. To be, come on now, they don't want to tell it. No. They don't want to tell how hard it was yes. for the process. That's right. <laughs> they don't want to tell the preparation. I tell you. They don't want to tell it, but woman of God, I am so eternally grateful that you chose to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. <laughs> so help you God, because your testimony is yeah. freeing someone up. Trust and believe me. I know it's someone up here that can contest to some of the same things that, you, that God has brought you out. Amen. Yes. I know it is. I know it is without a shadow of doubt. Now, you went further in ministry. Yes. I seen you give your, I don't know if it was your trial sermon or just a word from the Lord at that moment, but that blessed me, baby. That blessed me in itself. And when I said, I said, well, look at it. Now she's preaching. But I know, <laughs> I know what it didn't do. It didn't deter you yes. from doing the will of God. Uh, I tell you, you stayed on the battlefield. Yes. You stayed in the presence of him, of Jesus. That's right. You stayed prayed up. You yeah. persevered through hard times. 
The Bible says the race is not given to the swift nor That's to right. the strong, That's but right. to he that endures to the end. That's right. And I know he has more things for you to come. Amen. But in nationality and all, I mean, look where you're at in God. You have your inspiring to live. Yes. You're inspiring people out there. Now you have a book. Yes. You have your place. Oh, man. You, you got your own place now. You don't have to worry about going to your cousin's house and asking. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. <laughs> My God, woman of God, I am so, I'm truly, yes, endure. You got to endure. You got yes. to endure. Yes, you do. As a soldier, you got to. Whatever you do, I come to encourage somebody, don't get off the battlefield. That's right. If you rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, let him be your solid foundation. Because trust and believe me, if you quit, like my bishop always say, if you quit, then you will lose. That's right. But if you stay in the race, kick the dust off your hands, sweet, you don't have no choice but to go higher. Come on now. You don't have no choice but to go higher That's because right. the bottom is too full. And you can't stay at the bottom, but for so long. That's right. So he wants to see you press. He wants to see you persevere. He wants to see you be, uh, be, be with it. Just right. don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel so That's easy. Right. Because even he had abundance. Thank you, kind spirit. Even he had to suffer. That's right. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was in his flesh as well. He said, Father, if it be, if I can remember the, the scripture correctly, I think it's Matthew 26, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying unto the Father. Yeah. <laughs> and we know the Garden of Gethsemane be the crushing place. Yes. <laughs> when the enemy came in, he said, if you be the son of man, turn these stones into bread. Yes. He already knew who he was, so he didn't have to prove anything to nobody. He just had to sip from the cup. And that cup was mighty, baby. That cup was bloody. You taking me that kind of spirit. That cup was bloody. And just like Jesus Christ had to die to the flesh, so do we on a daily basis. Yes, we do. But this is the thing I love about God. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but let thy will be done. Oh, that's right. And if we get that as Christians, yes. if we get that as men and women of God, ambassadors, yes. spokesmen, servants of him, the call, the very elect. Yes. If we was to take on that same attribute mm -hmm. and characteristics, we too shall overcome. That's Revelation 12 and 11. And they overcame him right. by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You know, you said something and it was something that I recently learned when dealing with my nephew. Um, you know, we all prayed, you know, the ministry, everybody, we touched and agreed. We prayed and we spoke that he would live. We spoke, you know, we kept speaking that. Oh, my God. And I didn't realize, and it wasn't until God revealed it to me after the fact. And I, you know, I began to question. I said, we prayed and, you know, we waited and we believed you. And we spoke that, you know, he was going to live, that he was going to be healed. And it was at that moment that I realized we prayed what we want. Duh. But not one time did I say, Lord, what if it be your will? And Mind I learned in that shot. very moment that we can't just speak that this is going to happen. That is going to happen. I learned that moment that I was so heartbroken because I did not say, God, if it be your will, let him live. If it be Come your on, will, man. he will be healed. So I learned not to say that this is going to happen. I learned to say, Lord, I have the faith to believe. Don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. But I also know what his word says. I know now to say, Lord, if it be your will, let this come to pass. And that's why so many people are disappointed because they're praying, Lord, you know, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. Yes, you speak by faith, but you have to make sure you're speaking by faith according to God's will and not your will. Come see. And you said something there that stirs something up. You know, his ways aren't our ways. That's right. <clears throat> his thoughts aren't our, our thoughts. That's right. He know what's best for us. That's right. He know the way I should take. That's right. He know what I have need of before yes. I even ask of it. Come on, woman of God. You already know this. So yes. it's, it's just so amazing how all things work together. Yes, they do. <laughs> all things work yes, together. The good, the bad. The yeah. indifferent, 
all things work together. Yes. Because what he's doing is lining us up back to him. That's right. If we and I say I look at it like this, woman of God, evangelist. If we never got have gotten sick, yes. how do we know him to be a healer? That's right. If we never needed him in a courtroom, that's right. How do we know that he is our judge? You know, he right. he is our defense. If we never, in your mm -hmm. case, in my case, because I can relate to this too. If we never been without a place to stay, that's right. How do we know that he's a bridge over troubled water? Come on now. <laughs> I mean, if we never went hungry, that's how do right. we know that he's bread in the starving land? <laughs> you taking me, girl, you don't took me to another place. But <clears throat> we go through these things yes. just so we can give him back the glory. That's right. And just so we can get a little closer. <laughs> you know, trials and tribulations come to make us strong. That's right. So with every trial and every tribulation, we get stronger in him. Yes, and it gets it, it brings us closer to him in a relationship because we're now praying more, even though we should be praying every day anyway, meditate on his goodness day as day and night. But it's let's just be real, sis. Some of us don't pray until Some some stuff hit the fame. That's come right. on now. That's we just right. gonna keep it real and honest. Right. Some of us don't pray until stuff hit the fan. That's right. So I say all that to say this woman of God, I did not know that you had to endure all of that. Yes. And someone says it right here, Angela, thank God for you, baby. How can you appreciate the sunshine without the rain? There got to be a bit of sweet. I tell you. It there got to be a bit of sweet. Yes. And it reminds me. Thank you, Jesus. It reminds me of the story. Wait, wait a minute. Let me get this right. Of Abraham and Isaac. Mm -hmm. The bittersweet was Abraham obeyed God and he loved God. That's fine. And he said, God, whatever you do, I'm a sacrifice. Right. Well, he was obedient and began to go up to the mountainside and was going to slay his son. Yeah. But right at the nick of time, the son said, well, dad, you know, we got the firewood. We got the fire, we got the yes. wood, we got, we got the knife, we got everything prepared. Who's going to be the sacrifice? sacrifice. Yes. Who's going to be the sacrifice? Yes. And look, right in the nick of time when God seen that Abraham was, guess what? I can trust you now because you, you're about to kill him, but I'm not going to let you kill him. That's fine. Because I want you to look over there in the thickening of the book, in the bush. I want you to look over there in the thickings. Because I have a ram over there that you That's can slay. Right. I just wanted to see if you was going to endure what I asked you to endure. My God. I wanted to see if you was going to be obedient. Mm. I, that's all I wanted to see. Yeah. I, that's all I wanted to see if you was going to obey me. Regardless mm. if it's good or bad. Okay. Regardless if you had to suffer. And it brings me to another story of Job. Mm. <laughs> the one that walked up right before him. I tell you. Him and Enoch. I'm on the Osha. And, and the scripture that I read, thank you, kind spirit. The scripture that I read, Revelation 3 and 8. I know mm. thy works. Right. Behold, I have set before you an open door. Mm. Ah, that no man can shut. Right. And for thou hast little strength. Yes. <laughs> Thou have kept my word and you have not denied my name. That reminds me of you too, woman of God. Mm. In your hour of weakness, you still yes. kept your word. You still kept his word. You've given him back his word. Yes. In your weakness, he made you strong. See, you don't stir something up. You don't stir something up. You kept his words. Yes. And you didn't deny his name. No. So he said, if you humble yourself whoop, right. under the mighty hand of God, I will exalt you in due time. That's right. And this is why you can stand before us now and sit before us and tell us all the goodness that you had to go through. Hmm. All, e even, the, even the bad part, because it was all working together. It did. Right. <laughs> but nevertheless, ah, oh, my, 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 dear. yes, do not come off the wall. Stand strong in the Lord. I'm telling you, he ain't going to let you down. He's infallible. No. He makes no mistakes. No. He's unmutable. 
He changes not. He the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's right. That's right. And I know it gets hard. I know it gets rough. And sometimes we want to say, um, we want to say, um, God, I give up. I throw in the towel. But God said, I'm not going to let you come this far. Right. I'm going to give you beauty for your ashes. I tell you. <laughs> Angela, you snarling me up in here. Let me tell you something. <laughs> but woman of God, I am so, I'm so proud. First of all, I'm proud of you. Oh, God bless you. Because some of the trials and tribulations, what you've just given us, mm -hmm. some people didn't know how to come through. Yes. They didn't have no one to turn on. There was no one there maybe to show them the way. And like you said, depress, depression had came into play. But you know, because how you was raised, yeah. life and death lies in the power of the tongue. And they that love us shall eat the fruit thereof. You yeah. spoke against that thing. Yes. You yeah. spoke against it. And and I know the Bible say, I know I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Believe, yes. Come on here. And the reason we can say that is because the 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 eye, the naked natural eye, have seen so much. Yes. How can I believe in this God that I have not seen, but yet I know he's there? Yes. yes. And I do know what the Bible say. What you see is temporal. <laughs> And what you don't see is everlasting. So that further lets me know that God still reigns. He still exists. He's a yes. living God. <laughs> God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you. Woman of God, okay. Tell the people where, and I'm, it's going through the screen, but tell, enlighten the people where, how did you get started with your book? Who supported you with that? Oh my gosh, it took me 15 years to finally finish this book. Yes. 15 um, years. 15 years to start. I started and stopped this book because I was actually writing and actually getting free from so many things. Yeah. Um, you know, re bad relationship. I was getting out of, like I said, all these different things. And honestly, I was working on a job and I lost my job. And that day, that moment, I said, I will, I don't ever want to depend on one source of income ever again. When that day, when I was, they, they told me, you know, we no longer need you here anymore. We're making budget cuts. I said, you know what? I, I will never be <clears throat> in this situation again. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote my book. Um, that's when my catering business was started. <clears throat> Robin and Renee catering. Um, I just, from that, I took that bad thing and I just multiplied it with my faith. I had to. Come on now. I had to. And, you know, it, the enemy meant it for evil, but it worked out for my good. What? You know, losing that job and being able, like I said, book business, not one business, but multiple businesses just came out of that. And I'm just, I'm grateful for that. I am so grateful. That was the best thing that could have happened to me. I'm sorry, woman of God, I didn't hear that last part. Keep talking. No, I was saying that was the best thing that could have happened to me. The day they told me, you know, we no longer need you. That's that's when right. the light bulb, you know, that's when the per my purpose actually began to manifest. You know, yeah. the yeah. that God had for me. And somebody said in the food is the bomb dot com. <laughs> 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 well, you know what, woman of God, I mean, where we at right now, I ain't going over nobody's house, but I'm going to have to test that food. I'm going to have to test that food. One day soon in the near future, I'm going to have to test that food. Of and look, I don't eat beef and pork, so I'm just letting you know now. Okay. We I need you. that turkey, chicken, and fish. But <laughs> back to um, the bulk of the broadcast. Where we are now mm -hmm. and what you had to endure. What would you tell a single woman, a, 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 a youth, a, a adolescent? Where, what would you tell them to keep them pushing towards the mark of the high calling, which is Christ Jesus? How would you inspire them by not giving up on their dreams in spite of what they see and what they have to endure? I would let them know, just like for me, don't let what people say to you, don't let that inside of you. 
Know that God has a purpose and a plan for you. Know that we all make decisions and choices in our life. Mm -hmm. This is not where your life ends. Mm -hmm. Know that at whatever your purpose is, God will still fulfill that purpose in you. But you Talk. have to know. You have to be willing to know that I ha I can make it through this situation. Mm -hmm. So like I told you, people told me that I was I would never make it. You know, I'm not going to accomplish anything. And for years, that mold stuck over me. That mindset was on me. And it wasn't until God spoke and I realized the purpose that he had for my life that uh -huh. those words were broken off of my life. So I would let them know that you should live and not die. I would let them know that whatever decision you make, know that God is with you. I will let them know there are going to be some dark days because I had some dark days. But yeah. I understand the light, the better days are going to come. Keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> You know, and, and people need to know that. And, um, you know, I also I always talk about making an impact. People are so concerned nowadays about being popular. And a lot of the young people are getting lost because they're focused on being popular. It's not about being popular. You know, popularity is here today and gone tomorrow. Impact means you know that something you said, something that you've done, a word that you've spoken in somebody's life is yes. going to make a difference. It's going to change them. And yes. that's the mindset that these young people and a lot of adults need to have. They yes. need to know that it's about making a lasting impression. It's about saying that things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Come it's on, about yeah. somebody saying that you have transformed my life by your words. You have transformed my life through your prayer i will never be the same because of something that you said to me that's what it's about yeah nobody is saying that anymore nobody's concerned about that anymore we're concerned about i need to be in a pulpit no if you and that's what i tell people rather i have on jeans if i have on a a, a suit that costs three hundred dollars that does not make my anointing my anointing and my calling is still the same regardless of what i have on the power and authority is what's inside of me. And All that's right. what we need to focus on, the power and the authority that God has given us. And we're not focusing on that anymore. We've lost that now. We've lost that. And we have to get back to that. Woman of God, you you say, you 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 stirred me up <clears throat> when you said power, which is dunamis yes. in the Greek. And authority means yes. Azusa. Come on here. Yes. <clears throat> We got to leave something to these millenniums yes. to let them know it is not about title. <laughs> it's not about title. No. It's surely not. It's about the great commission. That's Matthew right. 28 and 19. That's he right. said, go into the nation. That's right. Teaching them all things, baptizing them in the That's name right. of the Father, the Son, and That's the Holy right. Ghost. The, right. It's not about that pulpit, baby, because everybody... No. And called to the pulpit. That's right. But that's the first place everybody goes to the pulpit. And who's saving the people if everybody is rushing there? No, no, it's not. We need to get out of the pulpit. We need to get people saved. We need to let them know this power in the name of Jesus. It's not power in Renee. It's not power yeah. in anybody else. The power's in the name of Jesus. And that's what we need to get back to teaching and preaching. Jesus Christ, let people know it's time to get saved, get baptized. We need to get back to that. But we're not yeah. teaching and preaching that anymore. Well, come on now. Come on, you done stirred me up. We're not preaching and teaching in that no more. And listen to what this young man said right here, Pastor Lawrence. Huff. The power is given by the Holy Spirit. And it reminds me of, what's that? Acts 1 and 8. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Right. You shall receive power. That's right. He resides in you. Yes, right. the Holy Spirit is a gift. Come on now. He resides in you, but it's still a gift. Mm-hmm. Is still a gift. <laughs> and everybody don't have that gift. No. Everybody don't have that gift because they thinking that, <clears throat> wait a minute, if I just come in here and dance, that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to convict you. That's right. The Holy Ghost is going to give you directions. That's right. The Holy Ghost is going to give you instructions. That's right. And the Holy Ghost is going to set you free. It's That's not right. going to keep you bound. That's so you can't keep coming into the church, the tabernacle, the same way. At some point, my God, at some point, you got to come in changed. That's right. 
That's right. You got to you got to take that word, apply it to your That's life. Right. That's right. You have to take it and apply it. That's the only way it's going to work. Faith without works is dead. Yeah, Come on right. now. Yes. You got to put it into action. Yes. But I'm just praying, woman of God, I thank God for you. But I'm praying that we will stop looking at the pulpit as a glorious place. That's Let's right. just be real. Yes. We, we need to stop looking at the pulpit as a glorious place. I'm going to be honest with you. The, the pulpit... The pulpit, mm -hmm. when I was in seminary at my church, my pastor Staples took us out of the classroom and took us to the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And I'm giving my testimony now. Um, and it was a good seven, eight or nine of us. And as we walking into the sanctuary, I'm saying to myself, oh, no, uh uh. I know he ain't about to do what I think he about to do. Uh -uh. No, and, and, and all types of scriptures was coming through my mind. Be also for everybody. Always have a praise on your lips, a word in your heart and a dance in your feet. And I'm saying to myself, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. But he, he did something so profound. Mm -hmm. He did something pro so profound. He took us in the pulpit and he asked each and every last one of us, what do we see? at the desk, at the sacred desk. Mm. And we was just all astonished. And we was looking like, what are you, what are you talking about, sir? Yeah. I mean, we see a pulpit because we saw, we saw the glory. We saw the glory and yes. he, he called on, a, he called on each and every last one of us <laughs> and asked for our answer. And some of us gave different answers, whatever the case may be. And mm. he was like, nope. You all wrong. And then I say, huh? He say, what I see is death. And I say, wait a minute. Wait, wait. <laughs> I mean, because your perspective on things yes. and people that's um, in ministry ahead of you, you're mm -hmm. covering. I'm saying to myself, I, I don't, how you get that out of that? Talk to yeah. me, man of God. He say, see, people see the glory. He said, but this place right here is death. It's a bloody place. And I say, what you mean by that? He said, because every time you drape this pulpit, you got to die to the flesh. That's right. I said, oh, my God. I mean, my whole perspective changed. In a twinkling of an eye, my yeah. whole perspective changed. Yes. Even though I'm going to be honest with you, woman of God, I've been running for a mighty, mighty long time. I was running from this calling from a mighty long time. But it wasn't until I heard the voice of the Lord say, you going to serve me. Oh, now, are you going to do it with me? Are you going to do it without me? Because you need my power. Yes. You know, it's, it's nothing of the goodness of your own. It's the anointing that destroys right. the yoke. It sure is. He says, so... I called you before you was even formed in your mother's womb, Jeremiah 1 and 5. He say, so you can run, but you can't hide. And eventually you're going to answer the call. And I, I had to go through the trials and tribulations anyway. So I said, God, I'd rather go through with you. That's right. I'd rather go with you on That's my right. side. Come on now. With your blessings. Yes. Because, yeah, he set before us life and death blessings and cursing so therefore he tells us what to do therefore choose life so that we and our seed can live yes so when when my pastor gave us that and i said to myself wow this because you know in the congregation you're looking at them and they you saying to yourself i want to do that and then you part of you saying no i don't <laughs> no i don't but see what people fail to realize they think it's a glorious thing yes because all they see is that you standing behind the pulpit but that's that's a that's that's death you have to die to the flesh you do and you and people don't realize when you're called to ministry it's not about like you said the pulpit your ministry can be in, in ministry and serving. That means that you may have to pray for people. That means you're going to have to help people. You're going to have to see people from death to life. Yeah. And people don't see that. It's not just getting up there preaching and, and you think because people are standing up and people are shouting. But what did that person do to get to that point? 
You My know, if, are you with, and there's so many people that want that. They want to be in a pulpit, but nobody wants to serve. Nobody wants to, to you know, to be under anybody. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to be a pastor. Everybody wants to be a leader. But have you followed? Yeah. Have you followed anybody? Come on, you know, here. Are you serving at your ministry? And nobody wants to do that. Everybody wants that title, but they don't want the responsibility. It's more to being a pastor and say, you know, I'm a pastor. Somebody's going to bring me something to drink. It's great responsibility with ministry, mm. Mm. your life, your character, who you are, what comes out of your mouth. You know, what are you displaying? Are you displaying Christ? Come All on here. It plays a, a role and a, a factor. I see so many people preaching and teaching, but their characteristics are not like Christ. My any fruits God. of the spirit. We have to show the fruits of the spirit. That's that's an example of being a leader. Your lifestyle. Yeah. All of that. Love, joy, meekness, humble, yes. kindness, humble. and listen. Humble. Be humble. Even even long suffering. Yes. That's right. Even long suffering. Yes. The fruit of the spirit. Even long suffering. Yes. And that's the part we don't want to we don't want to endure no. the process. We no. don't want to be crushed. No. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes, it will, Minister uh, Pastor Hub. It will cost your yes. life. Yes. Come on here, Angela. You said it, baby girl. Ministry is not about you. It's about building the kingdom right. of God. Now see. Right. Come on. That's right. It's never been about you. That's right. It's never been about you. Think about when God was about your shit. Thank you, kind spirit. Think about God when he was on the cow on Mount Calvary mm -hmm. and he was hanging on that cross, that yeah. old rugged cross. He did nothing wrong. No. Now the two men that was hanging with him, mm -hmm. men of thieves, yes. they were thieves. <laughs> they did wrong. They did wrong. Yes. He did nothing wrong mm -hmm. but to profess that he was Lord. Yes. That he that that he died for mm -hmm. our sins. That he he was the one, even though he never had to really claim who he was, he knew who he was. Right. But I say all that to say this, even while he was on the cross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, kind spirit. He had love in him where he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And these are the attributes. Yeah. And one of the thieves said to him, my Lord, when you come into your kingdom, when you come into your paradise, yes, please don't forget about me. Mm -hmm. Girl, you don't took me there. And he said, today mm -hmm. you shall be with me in paradise. Even though he done wrong, even though they were thieves, even though that he did wrong, God yeah. said, your sins are forgiven. forgiven. That's right. Because I'm giving my life for the remissions of men's sins. That's right. That's right. They yeah. see the glory, but they don't know what we have to endure. I tell you. My God, you done took me there. My God, woman of God, I am so eternally grateful. And it might sound crazy. But I, I'm glad you had to go through what you went through yeah. because it made you who you are today. If yes, that make any sense to you, yes, it does. I want you to think in the spiritual realm. Yes. I'm glad who I'm glad you had to go through who you had to go through because it made you who you are today. Yes, it did. Yes, and that's a humble vessel that's sitting in front of me with the anointing of God. Amen. That can bring anybody out of darkness Amen. because of your anointing, because of what you had to endure with your trials and tribulations, Amen. and that you came boldly before his throne to tell the entire world that if he did it for me, surely he can do it for somebody else. Woman of God, I'm eternally grateful. I'm serious. I'm stirred up in here. I'm stirred up in here. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. I am stirred up in here.
Mm. And um, I mean, we we at our time, and this was awesome. This was awesome. Yeah. Show them one more time, woman of God, where you can purchase your. Show them your book so they can see oh, the sure. face of it. And as you can see it um, strolling down on the page to purchase her book, you can go to Inspiring to Live or um, Walmart.com to purchase her book. It's called From From Bound to Found. Mm. Also, she has at Walmart her coffee mugs sweatshirts and t-shirts please go out and be supportive to this young lady i mean she's doing mighty and powerful things and god still has his hand upon you and i know your ministry is going to go even further because of your obedience because of your obedience i'm just eternally grateful for you woman of god i am uh um, I, I got to go because <clears throat> I can go on all night. I'm serious. I can go on all night. But before we go, if there's anyone, everyone knows how we ended here mm -hmm. at Testimonial Tuesdays. If it just so happened to be anyone who don't know God mm -hmm. and the free pardon of their sins, you can be saved. All you have to do, just repeat after me. I confess with my mouth, Romans 10 and 9. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God ah, has raised his son from the dead. And from that, you shall be saved. You can join um, a local assembly church. If you don't have one, you can inbox me and say, that's me. I want to be saved. And do you know of a local assembled church here in the metropolitan D.C. area? Or if you're not in this um, local area, metropolitan D.C. area, I will get you connected to a local church assembly that you, where you are residing at. But make sure they are preaching and teaching <laughs> the Holy Ghost. Make sure they are preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I love you all with agape. He say that's my cousin. Look at the <laughs> pastor. <Paul. laughs> uh, evangelist Renee Hub. Yes, I love you. I love you too, baby. I love you too. Um, I'm just so. I mean, you've given us so much, woman of God. I'm so grateful for your testimony. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you still um blessing the people with your ministry inspiring to live you keep pushing baby girl you Thank keep pushing you, so you keep pushing whatever you do don't come down off the wall i'm eternally grateful i truly am um if you don't mind closing us out with a word of prayer a quick two to three minute word of prayer please woman of god take us home Father, we thank you for tonight, Lord. We pray that something was said and done on tonight, God, that yeah, we turn Father. somebody's heart towards you. Lord, we pray for our nation on tonight, God. We thank pray, you, Father, Lord. in the name of Jesus, that all the wicked that's going on in the land, God, that your anointing, God, will destroy every yoke, God. Yes, we Father. pray, God, that you will just expose the hand of the enemy on tonight. Ah. We pray, Father, against death on tonight. We pray I'm against sickness shot. in the land in the name of Jesus. We pray against every ill word that's been spoken, God, in the name Thank of you, Jesus. Jesus. Father, we pray for those that are in the hospital on tonight. We yeah. pray, God, that you will be with them like never before, God. We pray for peace in the land in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We pray for the doctors, Lord. We pray for the nurses, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, yes, that God. they will speak life over people, God. We pray, God, for it again, Lord, just for the people that are in the land, God. We pray yeah. That you will turn somebody's heart towards you in the name of Jesus. In the Father, name of we Jesus. The blood of Jesus over the entire United States, God. We pray, God, that your will, your purpose, your plan will begin to manifest like never before. We pray for churches on tonight, God. We pray the that you will just fill the houses in the name of Jesus, God. In the name we pray of that Jesus. your word, God, will go throughout the land, God. We pray, Father, for favor in the name of Jesus. We pray for those that are um, low in finances, Lord. In yeah. the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you will meet every need on tonight. Oh, in the Lord. name of Jesus, we pray for the young people on tonight. Thank we you, pray Lord. against gun violence, Lord, in yes. the name of Jesus. We pray against drugs in the name of Jesus. In the name we of pray, Jesus. God, that you just will destroy every yoke. Yep. God, we, your thank you. we bless your name on tonight, God. Yes, you are so worthy, Lord. We yes, thank God. you, God. Where would we be if it had not been for you on our side? Father, we thank you on tonight. I pray for Minister Michelle on tonight. 
Lord. Every Lord. need that she has, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that Thank it will you, be met. We pray for her ministry, God, that it Thank will continue you, to explode in the name of Jesus. Thank we pray you, for favor on her job, favor in her home, God, favor in everything that she do. We thank, thank you and we bless everybody that's listening on tonight. Yes, in God. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Woman of God, thank you so much. My God, what a powerful prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Father God. Ah. We won't be abandiosha. We won't be abandiosha. Thank you, kind spirit. Ah, for coming in like a mighty Russian wind. God, we thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. God, we thank you. We seal it. We seal it with a, a agreement with you, oh God, by saying amen, 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 oh God. God, we thank you. Oh, we got to go. We got to go because we can go somewhere else. Ah, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord God, for her ministry. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for life, health, and strength. God, thank you for her two children. Thank you for her sister. Thank you for the family members, oh God. God, we thank you. Oh, yes, oh God, we thank you, Jesus, Abandiosha, for turning her beauty into Abandi. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. Beauty for her ashes, oh God. Beauty for her ashes, oh God. We thank you. We give you glory and we give you honor. We That's it. Uh, once again, to our viewers, Testimonial Tuesdays, people who always coming back up at Pastor Lawrence Hub. <coughs> Our very own Christina Brown to all those who chime in. Angela, y'all come be a part of Testimonial Tuesday. This ministry goes forth every Tuesday at 7.30, unless the Holy Ghost orchestrates us to do otherwise. But other than that, I will be here. I will be here. I will be here. I will not get off the wall. I dare not throw in the towel. I, I'm just going to hear him say, well done, at this all over and said and done with. I, I can't turn back. I don't, I don't got nowhere to turn back to. Let's just be honest. You know what I'm saying? I don't got nowhere to turn back to. So yes. I can't go back. But I thank you all for, for chiming in, click tagging and sharing and going back and repeat or even um, uh, send this to someone else who may may need to uh, hear it. I love you too, Pastor Long, little big brother. That's my little big brother. <laughs> right there. I love you too, Pastor Hub. And Nicole, wait, wait, wait a minute. I saw my baby up here. I saw her, Nicole Hub, Evangelist Nicole Hub. Look, I'm giving her a title. <laughs> Angela, baby girl, I love y'all so much. And y'all do me a favor, if you don't mind. When you get a chance, go to my YouTube channel and just subscribe to it. Amen. I'm trying to boost up that so I can stay on. Because, you know, if you don't got a lot of followers, they, they shut you down. But to <laughs> God be the glory. I mean, it's, it's all about the work of the ministry anyway. Somehow or another, we're going to get this out. We're going to get it out. So to God be the glory. Um, Love you right back. Oh, baby, God bless you. Once again, I love you all so much. To God be the glory. Woman of God, if you don't mind staying right there, please. Sure. Until next Tuesday, you don't want to miss another glorious testimony. I'm telling you, and the reason I say they're glorious, because they are. Everyone that God showed me their face in their name, you don't want to miss the testimony. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. So stay tuned for next week, next Tuesday at 730. I love you all with agape. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining.